Hello, and welcome to the fourth and final part of converting my Santa's present drop game to Amos. In part three, we took a look at hardware sprites, how they work, and how to use them. We also added some basic collision detection. In this part, we're going to improve our frames per second performance, make the game score, time, and bonuses work, add music and sound, and finally finish wrapping it all up by adding title and ending graphics. After all this, we'll use the Amos compiler to see what performance boost we get. So let's start with something fun, making the score work. If we look at the original game, we can see the score and time occupy a strip at the top of the game. We can create this in its own screen with its own independent colour palette. If we take a look at the original sprite sheet, we can see these graphics are scattered all over the place. So we'll take all of these and combine them into one, with the extra information in the lower half. We'll hide the bottom half when this is finally shown. You'll notice that the numbers are in a different colour. When we finally put this into the game, we'll make this colour white, but I'm keeping this colour reserved so we can apply some effects to it later on. Let's start with a small AMOS program to test the score bar out. First we'll create some global variables to handle the score and time when the game started. We're going to use AMOS's timer function to track the game time. AMOS's timer function increases by 1 50 times a second. So for example 1 minute would be represented as 3000. Next we'll prepare the screen to show this in. And finally, in the main loop we'll change some values so the bar can react. Each time we change something, we call this function to update what's changed. This function will only redraw anything that was different from when it was last called. We'll start by making this the active screen. Then we check the score, and if it's different, we work backwards through the digits drawing the new numbers. If the state of the bonus has changed, we use Amos's flash colour option to make the score blink quickly. We could optionally redraw the score to make the blinking effect, but it's far more efficient to let Amos do this by changing the palette for us. Lastly, we update the time bar by calculating the threshold point between where the colour part is and where the black area will be. Then clearing and drawing the relevant parts. So let's run this and see what happens. That seems to work okay. Let's add this to the game. So we'll start by copying across the code, starting with the global variables. Then we'll move the code to prepare this screen into the game preparation function. Next we'll add some code to the main loop to update the score, and if we run out of time, exit the game. And finally, we'll increase the score if a present lands on a chimney. We'll also add extra time if you ate a carrot, and enable double points if you eat a mince pie. So let's run this and see what happens. First we ate a mince pie, activating the double points bonus. You can see this now as I'm getting 20 points for each present. One thing I'm noticing is the animation doesn't look as smooth as it was. Let's adjust the program to show us the frame rate. So between 19 and 20 frames per second. That's not great. So let's see if we can do something about that. To find out what was causing the slowdown, I commented everything out in the main loop and gradually added things back in again to see what affected the frame rate the most. The first thing that made a difference was the collision detection for Santa. Reading all those pixels from the screen is very expensive. In the previous part, I talked about how the Amiga's hardware could actually do collision detection, so I decided to take another look at that. The Amos documentation for these functions is incredibly short and misleading. The first thing we have to do is tell the hardware what we want to detect a collision on. So we select the first bit plane. Next, if we haven't just picked up a bonus, which would have actually triggered a collision, we call the hard call function. This function returns zero if a collision between the sprite and the specified bit plane occurred. We then call call to find out if it collided with the background or the foreground layer. Each time you call hard call, it resets the detection. So I alternate between the two sprites used for Santa and check each one every other loop. Now just a word of caution if you're testing this on an emulator, these functions will not work unless the following option is ticked. I next updated the part of the function that was updating how much time we had left. I realised it was redrawing that every frame, which was completely unnecessary. And not only that, it was redrawing the colours and clearing the right hand side. Only one of these is ever needed at a time. I then changed the pan houses procedure so that the loop that occurs in there happens only every 16 pixels rather than every frame. And then finally I changed the main loop so the tasks that were taking the longest were split over separate frames. For example, checking Santa, checking the presents, and refreshing the scores all now occur on their own. 
This all helps to lighten the load of the main loop. And now if we run it, we can see a much improved frame rate. The remaining slowdown now is caused by these three functions that I can't do anything about and they have to be there. Ok, so let's move on. The next thing we're going to do is make the game scroll faster the longer you play. We'll do this by using the timer function again to track how much time has passed. Each frame will check how long has passed since the previous frame and use that to adjust the variable holding the game speed. We use the game speed variable to control how many pixels we scroll each frame. Finally, we need to update what happens when you click the wine glass bonus. We simply reduce the value of the game speed, slowing the scrolling down again. We'll now run this and see it in action. Thing is, this game's quite boring, and that's because sound plays a much larger part in any game than you realise. So let's start by adding some music. The original game used two ProTracker modules, one for the title screen and one for the main game. Amos allows you to load ProTracker modules, but it doesn't allow you to control their playback speed. So we'll have to convert the music into an Amos Music Bank using the Amos Music Bank converter tool. For some reason this isn't included in Amos Professional, so I've had to grab it from Amos 1.3. I've also included it on the discs link down below. This tool isn't the best. Not only have I had it crash on me and produce music files that crash Amos, it also doesn't produce a perfect replica of the original module. So after making a few adjustments to the module file, I finally got it converted and we can start it playing in the game like this. Then we can use this code to control its speed. This gives us the following result. Great, some cheesy Christmas music. But now we need to add some proper sound effects to the game. The original game had sound effects, but we need to get them into the IFF format that the Amiga understands. Audacity does allow exporting Amiga IFF files, so this part was straightforward. We then use Amos's sample bank maker to compile all the sound effects into a single file. Now that we have all the sound samples in memory, we need to trigger them to play. But the Amiga can only play four sounds at once, and we already have them playing music. So by looking at the music playing, and turning on and off the four channels, we can find the channel that affects the music the least, and play the samples there. It turns out with this module, the first few seconds, the best channel isn't the same as the rest of it. Rather than scatter checks all over the code, we make a single procedure that plays the sounds. Then we add calls for this function throughout the code where sound effects should play. And this is the result you get. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? So now we'll move on to the last section of the video. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail here, but we're going to create the title screen, the instruction screen, the end game screen, and then link them all together. If we look back at our original sprite sheet, we can see these screens are stored as full size images. We don't want to do this, so we're going to create a small sprite sheet with the required graphics on it, and then build them up in Amos as needed. So let's start with the title screen. The sprite sheet has already been placed in the hidden screen where we can access the graphics. We're overlaying this over the dual playfield which keeps the background in place. First we copy the graphics to the screen that make up the title, buttons and other graphics. We're using a slightly different colour palette here so we apply that too. Then we start the music and slide the title into view moving the Santa sprite images with it. Once slid in, we clear the area that's no longer visible and draw the instruction screen there. Now we wait in a loop, animating Santa until the mouse button is clicked over one of the two buttons on screen. If the instructions button was pressed, we scroll it in, and then wait for the mouse to be clicked on the button. Afterwards, we loop back towards the top and scroll the title screen back in again. If the start button was pressed, we clear the area where the instructions are, scroll off the title and exit the procedure. For the ending screen, we stop all the animations and hide all the sprites. Then we scroll the screen back to zero whilst clearing it from top to bottom towards the middle. Once clear, we draw the ending screen which consists of the game title, the words game over and a button. We then wait for the button to be pressed before fading out the scores and returning back to the main loop. Hope you got all of that, let's run the game.
And now we'll put it through the Amos compiler to see how much smoother everything runs. Well, that's not a bad conversion. I hope you've enjoyed following me through this series. In the description, I've linked to an ADF file which contains the source and a compiled version of the game. If you have any comments or suggestions for what I should work on next, leave me a message in the comments section below. And lastly, if you enjoyed the video, give me a like, subscribe to my channel and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll see you next time.